This is a video for solving a system of equations using substitution. For this example, I'm going to solve it two different ways. So there are a couple different ways you can look at solving this problem just because of the type of equations we've been given. So remember, in order to use substitution, we have to have an equation that is solved for one of the variables. So it's either y equals or x equals. So in order to do that, we need to take one of these equations and solve for either y or x, since neither of them are in that form already. So we need to look and see which equations we can do that with. If we look at equation number one, it's actually really easy to get x by itself since x has a coefficient of one. So we could take equation number one and solve it for x. Solving for y would be more difficult and result in fractions, so we want to avoid that if possible. In equation number two, we can easily solve for y because y has a coefficient of one. Solving for x would be more difficult, again, because the coefficient is not one, and again, it would result in fractions. So those are our two options. We can take equation number one and solve it for x, or we could solve equation number two for y. The first way I'm going to do it is take equation number two and solve for y. So this is the first way I'm going to do it. If you would rather take the first equation and solve for x, you can go to eight minutes and 28 seconds. Okay, let's continue solving this way. So I'm going to take equation number two and solve it for y. So I wanna get the term with y by itself so I need to leave this term alone and get rid of the 3x. We're going to do that by subtracting 3x from both sides. That zeroes out the 3x on the left side, leaving us with y equals, on the right side, we can't combine these because they're not like terms, so we just write them side by side. Since the 10 is positive, I'm gonna write plus 10. And there you go. That equation number two is now written in actually slope-intercept form, or it's solved for y. Now we can continue solving using substitution. So the next step we're going to do is we're going to take that expression that y is equal to, so I can see y is equal to negative 3x plus 10, and we're going to plug that in for y into the other equation. So you have to be careful, don't plug an equation into itself because an equation and itself share all the same solutions, so you get infinite solutions. So let's substitute that expression into equation number one. So I'm just gonna write equation number one over here, and so I'm gonna write x and then minus five, and now instead of y, I'm going to substitute this expression since that's what y is equal to. So I'm substituting in negative three x plus 10 then finish out the rest of the equation, so equals negative 18. Now you know that there are parentheses, so we have to use the distributive property. So I'm going to copy down the x, and then be careful here. We're distributing a 5, but actually it's a negative 5, so we have to distribute the negative with it. So these, this is one you have to be careful with. So another way you can look at it is changing this to adding a negative 5, and that'll help you a little more realize that you've got to distribute the negative 5. All right, so I have the x written down, so now I'm going to distribute negative 5 times negative 3x. Negative times a negative is a positive, and negative 5 times negative 3 is 15, so it's a positive 15x, so I'll write plus 15x, and then negative 5 times 10 is negative 50. So you can write that as adding a negative 50, or you can just write minus 50. That's the same thing as adding a negative 50. Equals negative 18. Now what you'll notice is we have like terms on the left side. X and 15X are like terms, so I can combine them. So X, remember that coefficient really is one. So one X plus 15 X is 16 X. We still have that minus 50 equals negative 18. To finish solving, we already have all the terms of variables on this left side. So we're going to leave it alone, get rid of the minus 50 by adding 50 to both sides. So that zeroes out the negative 50 on the left side, leaving us with 16x equals, and then negative 18 plus 50, so be careful here, you can use a calculator, it's 32, 
And our final step to get rid of the coefficient of x is to divide by that coefficient 16. So divide each side by 16, and you should know that 16 goes into 32 twice. So x is equal to 2. Great, we've solved for x. Now our next step is to solve for y. So we get to take either of the original equations, plug in our known value for x, and solve for y. So I'm going to choose to use the first equation because, or actually I'm going to use the second equation because that's easier to solve for y, just since y is by itself. You can use either though, so don't think you can't use that first one. So to solve for y, I'm going to do equation number 2. So 3x, but instead of x, I'm going to write what I found out x was, which is 2. And then plus y equals 10. Now we just finished solving. So I have to do this product here. So 3 times 2 is 6. So it's 6 plus y equals 10. Now we have to get rid of the 6 since it's on the same side with the y. So we're simply subtracting 6 from both sides. Zeros out on the left side, leaving us with y, and then equals 10 minus 6 is 4. So y is equal to 4. Our last step, as always, is to check our answer. So I'll scoot just down here. We can check our answer. Since we used equation number 2 to solve for the second variable, I already know that the pair 2, 4 works in the second equation. So I must check my equation in equation number 1. So we're going to check into equation number 1, which was x. So instead of x, I'm going to write 2. And since there's no coefficient here, we really don't need to use parentheses, but I am going to anyway. And then minus 5, and instead of y, we write 4, because that's what y is equal to. And that equals negative 18. Well, it's supposed to equal negative 18, so I'm going to put a question mark above the equal sign, because I'm not really sure if I'm right yet. Okay, so now we evaluate. So the 2, we're just going to leave there. And now... 5 times 4 is 20, but you're subtracting it, so it's minus 20. Or you can think of it as adding a negative 5, and negative 5 times 4 is negative 20. So just minus 20. Is that really equal to negative 18? And 20, or 2 minus 20 is negative 18. Again, use your calculator if you're unsure. So if for some reason this doesn't work out, your check doesn't work out, it could have been that you didn't check it right, so look at that first and then use a calculator make sure you did your arithmetic right, but otherwise if your check doesn't work out it means something went wrong up here and your solution is incorrect. So just be careful on determining which of those it is if you have a problem. Okay, our final answer, written as a coordinate point, so x is 2, so 2 goes first, and then y is 4. And then again we can use solution sets to be more uh, proper. And that's it. Okay, so if you want to keep watching and see how to do it the other way, you can keep watching, otherwise you're done. Okay, this is the second way to solve it, by taking the first equation and solving it for x. So I'm going to take that first equation, and since I'm trying to get the x term by itself, I'm going to leave it alone and get rid of this negative 5y. To get rid of the negative 5y, we're going to add 5y to both sides. That zeroes it out on the left side, leaving us with just x equals, these are not like terms, so we can't combine them, so we just write them side by side. So 5y, and then it's minus 18. Okay, now that equation is solved for x. So now we know x is equal to 5y minus 18, so we can take the expression 5y minus 18 and substitute that in for x in anywhere we see x. So we're going to substitute it in for x into the other equation. Remember, we don't want to substitute it into itself. Otherwise, we know that an equation and itself share all the same solutions. So that would be an infinite solution situation. So we're going to substitute this expression in for x into equation number 2. So I'll write equation number 2, and then 3, and then instead of x, we're going to substitute in that expression 5y minus 18. Then finish out the equation, which is plus y equals 10. 
Now we see we have parentheses, so we're going to use the distributive property. So 3 times 5y is positive 15y, and then 3 times negative 18 is negative 54. Or you could think of it as 3 times a positive 18 is 54, but you're subtracting it. Either way is fine. Finish out the equation, we still have the plus y and then equals 10. Now notice we do have like terms on the same side. They're not written exactly side by side, but that doesn't matter. As long as they're on the same side of the equation, we can combine them. And by combine, I mean add them together. And we have to take account their signs. So this is a positive 15y and a positive 1y. So that together is a positive 16y. So there's no like doing it to both sides like we did here because they're already on the same side. So we just combine them. So that becomes 16y. We still have the minus 54 and it still equals 10. Now we're going to simply finish solving. We have all our variables on the left side in one term, so we're going to leave it alone. Get rid of that negative 54 by adding 54 to both sides. That zeroes it out, leaving us with 16y on the left side equals 10 plus 54 is 64. And then our final step to get rid of that coefficient 16 is to divide by 16. So we divide each side by 16, and we get y on the left side equals, and then you can always use a calculator, but I know that 64 divided by 16 is 4. So y equals 4. Okay, now that we have one of our variables, we're going to use it to find the other variable. So since I know y, I'm going to plug it back into one of the original equations to solve for x. You can use either of the equations, but sometimes one is easier than the other. In this case, equation number one is going to be a little easier. But again, it really doesn't matter which one you use. So let's do it. So equation number one, I'm going to write x minus 5. And now instead of y, I'm going to write 4 because I know that's what y is equal to. Equals negative 18. Now I just finished solving. I have to do this product, so 5 times 4 is 20, and it's being subtracted, so it's x minus 20 equals negative 18. Then to finish solving for x, to get rid of that minus 20, we add 20 to both sides, zeroing it out on the left side, leaving us with x equals, and negative 18 plus 20 is 2. So x equals 2. Okay, the final step is to check it. So let's go down here. Since I used equation number one to solve for the second variable, I need to check it into equation number two. So for equation number two, we had three, and then instead of x, I'm going to put two because that's what x is equal to. Then plus y, instead of y, I'm going to write four. And again, I really don't need those parentheses because there's no coefficient that I need to remember to multiply by. And I want to see if that's really equal to 10. So evaluate 3 times 2 is 6. Just have to add 4 to that. And yes, 6 plus 4 is 10. So I confirmed that my solution is correct. So my final answer, written as a coordinate point, so that means x goes first, so 2, and then 4 for y. And again, we can use solution sets to make it a little more formal. And then that's our final answer. And that's it. Thanks for watching.